to ask you whether you felt that coronavirus and the way that that harmed children's education with school closures, etc. Do you think that has stilted social mobility in this country? Yes, I think it probably has. And I think we're beginning to see, are we not now? You talk to any teacher or head teacher, and the first thing almost that they will tell you, I was in Barnsley earlier this week, for example, and meeting um, a college principal there and employers, and they were talking there about the mental health problems that are now becoming um, obvious, at least to them, and probably to parents too, as a consequence, really, of what happened during COVID. But this, it goes much deeper than COVID. It's a systemic problem. It's been with us for very many years, if not decades. And as I say, it's all the way true from the early years through the university education. And it's a shocker, really, you know, that we still have an educational system, which is, if you like, biased towards are biased against, if you like, people from lower income backgrounds, certainly in terms of their performance. And I think that's why the focus on oracy and school reform is so important, because in today's world, you need to be able to communicate, you need to be able to collaborate, you need to be able to work with others. And the education system that we have, and indeed the curriculum that we have, is really a bit outdated, and it's time to change it. Let's move on to the NHS as you were health secretary for that period under Blair. Now, he said in 1997 that you had 24 hours to save the NHS. How would you assess the NHS now, all these years on? Well, look, I've been around, as you're indicating, many decades around health policy. And uh, I can honestly say this is the worst I've ever seen it in. It really is close to breaking point. I think social care, by the way, is probably broken. And so we've got a real problem. And what really compounds the felony, if you like, is that there's no plan to get out of this situation. People say it can't be done. I don't believe that. You know, I faced a very similar situation like in the late 90s. People were waiting 18 months, two years for a hospital operation. People will remember that. And we got the waiting times down over the course of mm. you know, a number of years um, to no more than 18 weeks. People could get to see a GP. Now they can't. Cancer outcomes were improving and so on. So it is possible to do it, but you do need a plan. And critically, you need not just money, but you do need radical reform of the system because it's just not set up to deal with today's problems. Hospitals tend to absorb most cash in the NHS, when what we really need is a system that keeps people healthy and out of hospitals so that they can be looked after in the community. But unfortunately, over these last few years, if you think of the number of GPs, for example, they've fallen by about 7% since yes. 2015. And that means that people needlessly end up in hospital. Do you think that Sajid Javid's suggestion of having a royal commission to look at how the NHS should be reformed is a good idea? No, I don't. I mean, I think all that that does is introduce yet more delay. The truth is the government should be getting on with it. If there's a change of government, it needs to get on with it. We broadly know what needs to be done, really. We know, for example, that one in four people who are in hospital today shouldn't be there, providing they can be diagnosed and treated soon enough. We know that one in five emergency admissions to hospital are potentially preventable. So what we've got to do is turn the system around, get the money in the right place, but critically, do these big reforms. Earlier this week, I was at the Crick Institute in London, which is one of the leading global centres, for example, in genomic science. And you begin to see there what's possible, because we can move to a world where rather than just diagnosing and treating people, we can now predict and prevent health. And that's what the system should be focused on. How are we going to harness that enormous technological revolution? People hear a lot about artificial intelligence. It's got yes. a part to play. But genomic science is really the game changer. We're okay. going to be able to predict whether you're going to get ill, and then we can do something to prevent it. And that's okay. far more sensible. And by the way, much cheaper than getting people into hospital. And yet Tony Blair's institute is suggesting a degree of part privatisation. It's talking about wealthier people being able to pay to jump the queue. There's also been talk about charging for GP appointments, for fining people if they miss appointments. What do you think of those ideas? Well, I think what Tony Blair was talking about this week was just simply alerting people to the fact that there are options available for them. And of course, there are. But let's be clear about this. For the overwhelming majority of people, the overwhelming majority of the time, it's going to be the NHS that is their go-to provider, and rightly so, because it provides care according to the right principle, which yeah. is the size of your need, not the size of your wallet. However, 
This is what we really got to think about. We've got to think about how do we use the private sector in all of its guises, not just private providers to treat NHS patients, but just think about all the advances that we're seeing in biomedicine. If we think about the advances that we're seeing in machine learning, they don't come from the public sector, they come yes. from the private sector. And in my view, we should have a very open mind about how we utilize private sector capability and capacity to treat NHS patients. That's what we did all years ago. It was a contributor to getting NHS rating moves down, and it can be again. And, but has Starmer got the solutions to these problems? Um, admittedly, the Labour Party are well ahead of the Conservatives in the polls, but at the same time, the electorate seems to be rather ambivalent about Sakir. He's not the heir to Blair, is he? Well, he's a very different type of character. That's perfectly obvious. But honestly, I think he's seriously, um, he's been seriously underestimated, um, mm -hmm. Keir Starmer. I mean, I read the um, report that came out on the NHS. I read the one that came out this week, as you think, Camilla, on uh, education. There are some really radical reform ideas in there. And the thing that he's got is that, look, the country's in a terrible mess. It's not just the NHS. It's across yeah. the piece. You've been talking about strikes. You know, we're going to have to transition the economy because it's going to become greener over time. We need to think about new jobs. But I think the thing that he's recognised, above all else, at the, at the these are deep-seated challenges. Yes. They're going to take time to put right, and you need a serious government with a serious plan in order to do that. Okay. Alan Milburn, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning.